from Isaiah. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All the people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother's sheep. The word of the Lord. You may be, in, be seated, and I invite you to pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock, our redeemer, our God who brings us comfort. Amen. Comfort, comfort, O my people, says your God. These are the ancient and beautiful opening words from the passage of Isaiah in our first lesson this morning. God's word spoken tenderly, spoken sonorously, spoken clearly to you and to me, to all the people, to bring comfort. These are also, of course, ancient words written down for people who were suffering in exile deeply uncomfortable, deeply miserable. And in our world today, our hearts and minds might go out then to think of those whose conditions are miserable right now, especially in Gaza, far away, or closer, those without homes here in our metro area, migrants who are seeking shelter. But the word of God always also comes to you wherever you are. And to get the power of the second Sunday of Advent and the word of God from Isaiah, we have to receive it in our lives, in our conditions where we are. And of course, for most of us here, um, Oak Park 2023, we have a lot of things that bring us comfort, don't we? The conditions, the material conditions, the physical conditions of our lives. We have heated buildings in winter. We have electric lights at the flip of a switch hot water at the turn of the tap, fresh fruits and vegetables in the grocery aisles, medicines at the corner drugstore to ease our pain. And at the click of a few buttons and a delivery of a package at the door, something comfortable and new that you can buy online. So whether it is in the physical things or in the endless entertainment that our culture, our society provides for us to ease our minds, we can find comfort in all kinds of ways. But the question for us is, does the comfort we receive, does it make it better as human beings? Does it make us better as human beings? All the ways that we receive comfort in the physical and material ways that all the technology and progress of the last hundred years have bring, up, bring us, have we become better people? Think about this. 
the comfort that God brings is going to turn us inside out, no matter what our conditions are in. The comfort that God brings, God's word to us, is a different kind of comfort, isn't it? And so, in a way that is better than simply ease, a way that's better than simply relief or instant gratification, the prophet Isaiah says, comfort, comfort, O oh my people. And the roots of the word comfort, if you break it down into its parts, fort, like building a fort, a blanket fort, right? Fort Knox. It's, it means strength and come, right, as a, a, a connective word. Strong with. The meaning of the word comfort isn't so much ease as it is strength with you. Strength with God. Strength with God that isn't about the instant of satisfaction where you get the result you wanted or the instant satisfaction of a product ordered online or something physical that gives you comfort but you take it for granted when it's gone the next moment. The comfort that is the strength with God is the comfort that comes along with you in the way that your life is going and opens it up to be grown, to be made better by being joined, comforted with all the people that God's word brings comfort to, brings peace and healing. As I said, the main, the main lesson or the main point I, w- I wish to come across in this sermon is, is, the, is to grasp the different meaning of comfort, that it isn't so much instant gratification of needs or reliefs or pains or satisfaction of desires, but the comfort and the goodness and the strength that comes from being invited into the story of God with God's people. The comfort that lasts through the long road of life and is with you, yes, as Isaiah says, on mountaintops and in valleys and draws all people together into the open plain. Whether the mountaintops are the mountaintops of anniversaries that you give thanks for, someone who has stayed faithful by your side through many years, whether it is the thankfulness of a retirement celebration, whether it is the mountaintop of joy at a new grandchild or a new baby delivered into your family's life. These are brought along into the story of God. The mountains shall be made low and the valleys too. They shall be brought up, right? The valleys of grief, the valleys of long, long years of absence, of diagnoses for which there are no cure, or physical conditions and loss of mobility for which one has to only adjust and live with. The comfort isn't relief or easy answers. It's the strength of joining with others in the story of a God who does not give up on weak people or abandoned people, but draws them together into community. I've seen this in our lives here at United. I've seen it when you are in fellowship with one another. Yes, in the coffee hour. Sometimes it's in the sacristy halls or just outside the church when you linger and take a moment with each other. And it's easy to stay on the surface and to talk about the things that are news in each other's lives. And we want to hear that. We want to stay connected in those ways. But I've seen it in your faces, members of United, where you've become where you've drawn spontaneously sometimes into an open and vulnerable place where you've shared something uncomfortable from your life. And sometimes, right, the best response is not an instant gratification or an instant affirmation, an instant validation. Sometimes it's simply the embrace that this person is still with you through what you're going through, right? That the church community surrounds you, that the body of Christ is gathered And yes, we bear our wounds and we scars, but the comfort that God gives is the long comfort of the journey that we share with one another, that we become better, more open. It's very different than the comfort of an instant answer, right? And here I also lift up that when we talk about comforting one another and encouraging one another, there is a temptation here too. The temptation is to dwell in all the times where you haven't given comfort and you know, you you recognize by your conscience that you should have to someone else. Or the temptation is to compare who has given more comfort to others and who hasn't, right? 
those kind of satisfactions and comparing ourselves one against each other, do they leave us back to the good road of communion together? Or do they leave us apart, staying in what can become resentments? This is where John the Baptist speaks to us too, of the baptism that we all share, the waters in which we are all drawn into, which bring to end the power of sin in our lives so that God can bring something new. And the fire that burns, it isn't the, the burning of a resentment. It's the burning of God's love, the furnace that never goes out, that will heat this weary world and our bones and our church through this season and every season by the grace of God. Comfort, comfort, oh you people. We are drawn together, not for the instant, but for the long journey. Amen. The herald's voice is crying in the desert for